Watch closely. Something amazing happens when a team is down by a goal in the final minutes of a hockey game. That team's goaltender will skate right off the ice in the middle of play, leaving his goal untended. In exchange, an extra skater hops into the fray and joins the attack. For hockey fans, these are the scariest and most exciting moments of the game. I'm your host, Brody Gay, and welcome to Playmakers. In this video, I want to explore the statistical effectiveness of pulling a goalie in these final desperate moments. More importantly, I want to ask the simple question, is every NHL team pulling their goalie way too late? Finally, I'll interview a general manager of a major hockey team. Yeah, my initial reaction would be the hockey purist me would think that's early. Um, but there's a reason these numbers came out. And a professor of behavioral finance on why it's so hard to break convention in sports, even when we know we are acting suboptimally. We reward success, not smart decisions. Right. So if you make faith outcomes things, matter, I, yeah. it's outcomes. In 1931, Arb Ross, legendary coach and general manager of the Boston Bruins, pulled the first goalie in the history of the NHL. The Bruins were down by a goal to the Montreal Canadiens in a decisive playoff game. At the time, the idea seemed a bit crazy. You see, NHL players can score in an empty net from just about anywhere. So the margin of error is razor thin. However, in a desperate attempt to score that game-tying goal, his team needed all the extra firepower it could get. As the clock wound down, the benefit from an extra attacker outweighed the risk of leaving his own net wide open. The Bruins didn't manage to come back and tie the game. However, other teams caught on quickly. In modern hockey, pulling a goalie in the final minutes of a losing game has become a stable hockey tactic. Just look at the last 10 years of regular season NHL games. In those 10 years, teams have pulled their goalies 98% of the time when trailing in the final two minutes of the game. Clearly, teams must believe this tactic is effective. But how do we really know if it is, in fact, effective? Let's take a look at some statistics to see if pulling a goalie can really improve a team's chances of tying the game. In one minute of regular five-on-five -five hockey, an NHL team will score a goal 4% of the time. Now, with the extra firepower we get from pulling our goalie, we increase our scoring rate by almost a factor of three, from 4% to 11%. So, did we just triple our chances of tying the game in the final minute? Not exactly, since we must also consider that the opposing team can score on us. The opposing team will score at that normal rate of 4%, but after we pull our goalie, their chance of scoring on our empty net increases sixfold to a whopping 23%. So we can use these numbers to calculate a rough estimate of our chance of tying the game in the final minute with and without pulling a goalie. What we're interested in is the probability that we score, and we need to multiply that by the probability the other team doesn't score on us. The resulting estimates give us a game time rate of 3.8% when we do not pull our goalie, and a much better rate of 8.5% if we do pull our goalie. So we've more than doubled our chances of tying the game by pulling the goalie in the final minute when down by a single goal. Naturally, the next question is, what's the best time to do it? Clearly, waiting till the last few seconds of the game is way too late. But it's equally intuitive that you wouldn't want to pull your goalie at the beginning of the game just because you were down by a single goal. That is, unless you want to lose the game 10-0. So, there must be some optimal time between these two extremes. We can look at the distribution of times that goalies have been pulled in the last 10 NHL hockey seasons. These times are bucketed into one-minute intervals. 25% of the time, goalies were pulled in the last minute of play. 50% of the time, they were pulled with two minutes left. 19% of the time, they were pulled with three minutes left. So only 5% of goalies were pulled when there was more than three minutes left in the game, and they were almost never pulled with more than four minutes left. So who's right? Who's pulling their goalie at the right time? Clifford Assis and Aaron Brown published a paper in 2018 to answer this exact question. When down by a single goal, they found that the optimal time to pull a goalie was at the six minute mark. That's a whopping four minutes earlier than the average NHL team. 
Asnes and Brown also analyzed situations when a team was down by multiple goals, and the recommendations are staggering. If a team is down by two goals, they recommend pulling with 13 minutes left in the clock. When down by three goals, you could pull as early as 23 minutes. That's right, you'd be pulling your goalie at the end of the second period. And if you think that's crazy, then I'm about to blow your mind. If you are down by four or more goals, they recommend you play without a goalie. While the improvement in probabilities of tying individual game may seem small, Astis and Brown calculated that a full season of optimal goalie pulling results in additional three standing points over a team that does not pull their goal. For some teams, this could be the difference between making or missing the playoffs. Now, it is impossible to know whether or not these models are predictive until coaches begin to implement these much earlier goalie pulls. Fortunately, we're beginning to see some innovation. In 2016, Patrick Waugh, coach of the Colorado Avalanche, pulled his goalie with 10 minutes left in the game. He failed to achieve the comeback, but received a lot of attention for this uncommon early pull. More recently, Dean Evanson, coach of the Minnesota Wild, has pulled his goalie multiple times, with more than eight minutes left of the clock. On a notable occasion, he pulled his team's goalie, Cam Talbot, with nine minutes and 20 seconds left in the clock in an attempt to overcome a three-goal deficit, but failed to do so. While these are innovative moments, it is not nearly as early as the models would suggest for such a large goal deficit. So why is it so hard for hockey teams to take these statistical models seriously? Assis and Brown provide an interesting opinion on the matter. This opinion begins with a quote from John Maynard Keynes. He pointed out that, worldly wisdom teaches that it is better for reputation to fail conventionally than to succeed unconventionally. This seems to hold in all sports. Basketball coaches were slow to have players attempt enough three-point shots. Football coaches punt on too many fourth downs and don't attempt enough two-point conversions. Baseball managers were slow to appreciate the value of walks, the cost of outs, and the utility of the infield shift. In theory, these earlier goalie pulls sound great, but I wanted to get a real practical opinion on the matter. So I spoke to Dave Drinkle, the GM of the Saginaw Spirit, one of the top teams in the Canadian Hockey League. Yeah, my initial reaction would be the hockey purist me would think that's early, um, but there's a reason these numbers came out and, and it's interesting, it's something I would want to dig deeper into. Um, I think when you look at those numbers, you have to look at different levels of play. At the NHL level, I can maybe understand six minutes if you're down by one because up there you don't get a lot of opportunities not a lot of mistakes there is a mistake at that level usually ends into a scoring chance a goal whereas at the junior hockey level which we're working with primarily um games can turn quickly uh there can be a lot of mistakes momentum swings kind of really take a on its own head in our league and you can score two or three goals in a three minute span so to me um initially my initial reaction to hearing that that it would be a little bit high but there's a reason for that and it'd be something i'd want to dig deeper into it and i would be open to talking to our coaching staff about it. i know our head coach, Chris Lazary, actually, our last game, we were down by two and he pulled our goalie, I believe, with 4.45, five minutes left in that range. Um, we ended up giving an empty net, empty net goal up, but he pulled him again, we scored, and the kind of the goal, the pulling continued. So we're not afraid to kind of use those uh, metrics when we're analyzing our game. And it's interesting the six minute mark for one goal because I feel uh, in junior hockey, a lot can happen in the last six minutes of a game. If you have pressure and possession and you really have momentum, can you draw a power play within the last you know, three or four minutes of the game to try to score first. And if that doesn't happen, then you pull your goalie at two, two and a half. I'm not sure, but um, definitely an interesting concept that was that early. Yeah, and I think we spoke uh, before this, but about even the crazier numbers, which are if you're down by three, pulling as early as the end of the second period. And then the one that I think still blows my mind is that if you're down by four, they, that the paper recommends you play without a goalie. And I mean, speaking of these empty net goals, you think, you think if a coach pulls his goalie in the first period, down by four. Do you, you think that coach is out of a job I buy next game? I, I honestly don't see a coach ever doing that, so I don't know if that scenario would ever present itself. But um, yeah, like I, I think, you know, they're like I said, analytics are, are a great tool that you can tie into the game, but they can't be the be all and end all. And maybe I think you may be getting a little bit too exaggerated if you're not playing without a goalie at all, because all it takes is the team to ice it and empty net, and the game would be over. But the interesting thing for me is a down by two, even down by three, uh, you know, the 12 minute mark. You know, I think you can get one. You, just because you pull your goalie with 12 or 13 minutes left down by three, if you score a goal, you don't have to leave your goalie out. So I, I think that's interesting that maybe you're 12 minutes left to score one, you're down by three, now you're down by two. Maybe give you give it a minute or two, put your goalie back in, see what can happen after that. Maybe you draw a power play, 
and kind of go from there. So definitely an interesting concept for sure. I can see different trends happening, change that way because I think the new age generation of hockey is definitely more open-minded to the quote unquote old school approach, which maybe this is the way we've always done it. Um, and that's great too. Hockey is a wonderful game and, and I love it. It's my life. And um, there is a way to play hockey, I believe, but there's also a way to open your mind to the new concepts and ideas that are constantly evolving within the game. So I'm here with Terry O'Dean, the Rudd Family Foundation Professor of Finance with the Haas School of Business. And you've spent your careers looking at um, behavioral finance, the, the decisions that people make in organizations. And I, you know, I wanted to ask you, if we think of these hockey teams as organizations, why aren't coaches pulling their goalies earlier, even though we know statistically it's the right decision to make? How many of the coaches are statisticians? Not too many that I know of. Maybe uh, Kyle Dubas of the Toronto Maple Leafs is the, the first one. All right, so, you know, there's a start, which is most people don't think that statistically. Uh, probably most people actually don't engage statistics in their uh, decision-making all that much. And I know things have started to change in sports. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, we've, you know, the... Oakland A's and Moneyball and starting to change the idea of they thinking about uh, what strategies and behaviors actually lead to winning a game. One of the problems with pulling the goalie is that it rarely leads to winning the game. Right. It's such a low probability of success type of event. Right. So the outcomes, the most likely outcome is I just lose. Mm -hmm. And that's not so bad. You know, you pulled the goalie, you lost, everyone knew you were probably going to lose anyhow. The embarrassing one is I pulled the goalie and 15 seconds later, somebody took a shot from mid ice. Scored. It's guarded. All the fans have left. And they're just like, oh, this is horrible. And then you start to think about when you pull a goalie, if you're down by two. 13 minutes, I think is what the paper says. It, a lot of damage can happen in 13 right. minutes. We both understand that in terms of winning the Stanley Cup, small losses and big losses. They mean the same They're thing. equivalent. Right. In terms of Happy fans, happy players. They happy co coaches who still have a job. Coaches who still have a job. It makes a difference. And, you know, and this is an issue in, in a lot of areas that, you know, in business and life that um, it's much easier to figure out how to optimize one dimension. But mostly in life, we're trying to improve one thing without Messing with messing any other things. I mean, let's go even crazier, right? If you're down by three goals, they say you should pull your goalie in the second period. Yeah. And if you're down by four, a play without a goalie, I mean, right. imagine being a coach, you probably wouldn't have a job the next imagine game. Imagine reading the paper the next morning. Right. You're down by three, you pull the goalie in the second quarter, the other team scores five times, and uh, it's time to start getting your resume out. Right. <laughs> start polishing. If everyone says, well, under these circumstances, you go for it on fourth down. And it starts to be, well, that was the smart thing to do even if it didn't work out. Okay. But if it's incon unconventional and it doesn't work out, then the attitude is, what was he thinking? So, and we reward, in this, well, by the way, we reward success, not smart decisions. Right. So if you make basically- Outcomes matter. Uh, yeah. It's outcomes. If you make what's really kind of a stupid decision that works out, everyone is like, ah, yeah, he just knew. And if you make a smart decision and it fails, you, you, very few people come to your defense. Right. You mentioned the two that the, co the coaches don't have statistics degrees. I mean, also sport, the drunk sports fans. The players <laughs> on for the most part, not statistics. Yeah. And so you can only get them once it becomes received wisdom. Then you could find these uh, armchair players saying, well, I heard, you know, I, I, I read that mm -hmm. he should have pulled the goalie, but we're a long way from the point where everyone understands it's the thing to do. But things do change. You know, you and I were talking about the three-point shot now right. is understood to be, you know, to the cat's meow. You don't have to uh, convince the fans that you want a three-point shooter out there. Right. But that took time too. And it, there's, there's almost a herd mentality that's required. You, you can't just, you know, singularly stick your neck out. You almost need a little, you need, you need the research papers to be developed. You need for potentially some minor league teams to take some extra risks and then develop that culture of innovation where slowly teams start to innovate kind of together. Or maybe a coach with a very secure job. Yeah, a coach with a lot of political power, right? Yeah. And who actually buys into the, into the theory? Oh yeah. I mean, there, there is an aspect to that. We're just talking about theory 
on paper, we really do need teams to start trying and maybe the right way is to try it slowly um, and to start to slowly increase the amount of time that they, they take to pull their goalie um, and to build out the data points, right? Because I mean, like we said, you don't really want to be the first guy pulling your goalie in the first period because you're down by four, but maybe, you know, you start to see that evolution uh, of pulling goalie growth. And at a certain point, the dynamic changes, the equilibrium starts shifting in another way where teams start practicing mm -hmm. for what do we do when the other team pulls the goalie. Right. And they start saying, hey guys, you, uh, can, it's, you can start it's practicing a good your point. mid ice shots. Yeah. So now you got a reaction to the new strategy and you're and maybe it's no longer make the numbers may change right you know it's then you see that in business you know you you studied finance and the idea that there's something your model works against you almost yeah yeah if you enjoyed this content please drop a like and subscribe to the channel